6.5 is on the road here in San Francisco at AMD's Advancing AI event, second annual event. I mean, guess what? It's all about AI, data center AI, client AI, and su the supporting cast to make it happen. CPU, GPU, networking, NPUs, great tech. Pat, we covered the gambit. It really did show AMD's wares across data center, client, and I think there were even a few surprises in there, and it was just an overall really positive event for overall the perspective on AI, and of course for the company. Yeah, the event was primarily data center, and I need to pull in Forrest Narod, who runs that business here at AMD, to talk about it. Forrest, welcome back to the 6.5. Thanks a lot, great to be here with you guys. Yeah, I mean, last year was, was a home run, and we we're all wondering what could you do this year uh, and it was it was pretty exciting. We did a couple broadcast interviews, and um, congratulations. Well, thank you so much. Yep. Yeah, super proud of what the team has done. Yeah, yeah, it was a really compelling mix, and I think you heard in, the, in a bit of the, the build up there. What is AMD? You know, in terms of you know data center and client, and there's this movement with AIPC and even networking, and so you That's have right. data center. Uh, under your purview, right? Um, so you had some pretty com uh, comprehensive announcements around Epic. You had some yep. pretty big announcements around Instinct, and of course, a number of sizable announcements in networking, which I think was a little new, maybe even a little surprising to people. Talk about how you're sort of evolving from a company that's focused on moving many, many parts to a company that's really building systems and, and an entire AI stack for companies. Yeah, well, we've we've been on a journey in the data center really for the last decade. You know, of, of trying to first reestablish ourselves as a credible component supplier of, of initially server CPUs, um, but then moving from that to extend into GPUs and then extend across the data center into the the rest of the gear. And so networking was the obvious next step in terms of the silicon that you need. You need a CPU, you need a GPU, you need a way to put it all together. Um, but when you, when you look beyond that, the complexity of the systems that we're building nowadays is, is getting so high. Just the power, the density, the, the challenges around you know, building a 200 kilowatt rack with you know, 70 plus GPUs in it and CPUs, et cetera. Um, you have to start really thinking about it as you're not, you're not designing chips anymore. You have to think from the beginning that you're designing systems. Uh, because if you don't, you're going to screw it up. And so, you know, we've been trying to be on this journey of, of moving from, you know, first component after component, get broad coverage of world-class components, and then uh, bring in some world-class capability to build up system solutions as well. Yeah, it is interesting how, um it has evolved. Um, every huge inflection point in technology, whether it was mainframes to minis, uh, minis to client server, and then you add on different workloads. I remember when you know even database was putting stresses uh, on memory, and by the way, it still is, mm -hmm. uh, and storage, but having to have an alignment, uh, CPU, and today, GPU, uh, storage, memory, and networking uh, is, is important. And you know, you talked about the, the simplicity uh, of that. Uh, can you talk a little bit about um, any other reasons than simplicity that people want to buy full solutions today? Is it is it time to market, or is that really simplicity? Is it performance, reliability? Why is that? I think it's a little bit of all of those, and and I think you know, one is most people don't want to put the solution together themselves. Right. So particularly for enterprises or say tier two cloud players, they may not have the interest or the capability to assemble best of breed components into an integrated solution and make right. it work. And so they want to, they look to companies like AMD working with our partners, Dell, HPE, Lenovo, et cetera, to put together uh, full up solutions. And that's, that's what they want to buy. You know, it's, it's, it's funny, I sometimes tell my, my team Nobody wants to buy a server CPU, much less, they don't want to buy a server, they want a solution, they right. want a solution to a problem. And so I think that's the dominant reason. But then beyond that, you know, you really have to, if, if, you, if you put these things together, you can gain more performance, you can optimize the interfaces, you can look for ways to, to optimize data flows, you can manage, monitor, and respond to failures better. And so it's all about 
it's not just about solution. It's about making the solution work well in the data center. It also sounds like, you know, it's really about have it your way, right? Because you're partnering with other people in the ecosystem. Uh, you know, they might want to piece part it, right? And and you're open, so you're giving them open pathways to be able to do that. Uh, but true. you're also, um, you know, it's almost some people want the easy button or, or the easier button, and at least what our research suggests is even that most even training runs uh, bomb out because of the network, uh, and second is because there's maybe an issue with the GPU. Right. And it sounds like what you're doing on the networking side, first of all, um, uh, DPU is driving it all. Uh, on the front end, uh, with Pensando, and even the back end now, with mm -hmm. this new AI-based uh, NIC to, sounds like it, to relieve congestion on the back end of the networks where they either have GPUs or accelerators. No, that's right. I mean, networking, I think, is is becoming an appreciated part of the overall problem of, of these big GPU clusters. And you're exactly right. I mean, when you when you think about um, uh, these things at scale, 10,000, 20,000, 30,000 GPUs, you're going to have a failure every few hours, just the laws of physics dictate, right, no matter how resilient you are. And so, number one, you want to have high reliability solutions so that you minimize those times. But then two, you have to have the ability to recover. Recover, God forbid, roll back to a checkpoint if you absolutely have to, but the last thing you want to do is restart the job. Sure. And so for us, networking is a critical part of, of having that overall solution with the resilience, the monitoring, even the predictive ability to say, hey, this part is likely to fail we start to see you know, errors accumulating. Uh, and so, yeah, the, the Pensando technology to be able to offer high-speed networking, but in a fully programmable way that you can add high-value services on top of it is, is critical. It also it seems like a really substantial TAM opportunity as you look to expand, right? Because every one of these, you have the fastest ramp part with the, with the new instincts in the GPU right. product, but We've seen the, the value of systems and what it's created for this market and this industry. And the opportunity for AMD to provide more of the total solution is certainly going to increase the company's opportunity to drive more, more revenue and, of course, better outcomes for, for customers. I also think it's important to mention you made some really great progress on software. And I think the software-hardware connection right now is symbiotic. I mean, it's really, really important in this AI era that the software is enabled the developers buy in, and now this technology, which has been on par for some time, can fully realize the potential. I'd be remiss to not talk about Epic, though. You know, I know we, I know everyone wants to spend all the time talking about the AI chip, but CPU and GPU are another symbiotic thing. Yeah. <laughs> and you've done a remarkably good job of winning the cloud providers. I think 50, 60 percent, I've heard, we've heard, numbers as high as 80% with certain uh, cloud providers on Epic. You've made some really great announcements there. Talk, you know, just a little bit about kind of how that roadmap evolves. What do you attribute so much success to? And, you know, do you think you can keep going? Is there more market to gain? Yeah, I think, I think uh, well, first off, I'm incredibly proud of what the team has done. Epic is an incredible product. It's a great road, well, a whole series of products. It's a great roadmap, and the team's done an incredible job. And you know we're honored to get you know such a high share with the cloud. And the thing that I'll attribute that to is that at the end of the day, for the cloud players, the data center is not a cost center; it's their factory. And so you know their products are produced in the data center. And so making that data center more efficient, um, making it you know higher performance, translates immediately into cost of goods sold, cost per service user, cost per query, cost per, per YouTube video. And so because of that, the, the folks making selection on the server CPUs for the data center customers are, you know, have a direct connection to the, 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 the CEO. They're, they're critical in driving business results. And so they're going to embrace the superior solution, you know, sort of devoid of any other considerations. I'll contrast that to the, the classic enterprise where you know, the, the data center is an integral part of their business, but essentially it's, it plays a supporting role. 
it's not their factory. It's, it is a cost center. And the, I think there the CIOs are much more um, concerned about risk, about business interruption. They don't want to disrupt the business. Right. Uh, and so their calculus in making a decision of whether or not to embrace something new is different. I think that over time, you know, as, as we've continued to uh, deliver, the, the acceptance of Epic and the, the fear of the new is, is uh, you know, the acceptance is growing, the fear is, is diminishing. And so I think we're starting to see more and more uh, customers embrace Epic uh, in enterprise on-prem as well. And, and I'll tell you, the other interesting thing is we've noticed, and maybe we should have seen this before, but there's an interesting on-ramp here. Mm -hmm. The easiest way to get enterprises onto Epic and allay that fear is to get them to try it in the cloud. It's easy to do, it's an easy switch, right. and once they start seeing it in cloud, and everybody's using you know, a hybrid environment now, so they all have some cloud deployment, it makes it much easier to go back and talk to them about, well, let's talk about on-prem as well. Yeah, it's an interesting behavior uh, in the enterprise. You have some enterprise that say, oh my gosh, uh, some hot new technology is great in the cloud. I need to adopt that or I will adopt that in the future. Others might think, oh, that's not for me. But, but ultimately, they do end up at what the hyperscalers uh, want to use. It might not look the same. I mean, even networking offload that you have with Pensando today, uh, you know, had been in hyperscalers for years mm -hmm. before it uh, came to the enterprise. So I fully believe that that you will have an even greater story as people get more comfortable with, uh, with Epic there. Um, I do want to talk about the future of the CPU. It's funny, a lot of memes out there, a lot of discussions around, you know, this, as it relates to AI, the CPU doesn't matter, right? Oh, it's a head end. I mean, you've got a bunch of headless uh, GPU servers and it, yeah, it's a nice traffic cop uh, out there. And then the other side, it's kind of like, well, history says that when things get mainstream, you want to integrate a lot of that onto the CPU, great latency, lower power, um, either by putting blocks on there or algorithms that support it. What's your view of the future of the CPU in AI and its importance? Yeah, I think that the, the, the CPU can play, or does play, a, a pretty important role in determining the performance of an AI system. So let, let's, just, let's actually keep this simple. Let's just talk about it. Yeah. CPU feeding a, a GPU AI cluster. Um, one of the things we talked about today and we showed on stage is that you know the CPU can make a big uh, uh, Im impact on the performance of the GPU cluster. So this this thought that the CPU doesn't matter, it's actually easy to disprove. Okay. And um, you know we've shown that moving from say a Sapphire Rapids uh, head node to a uh, Epic head node can give you you know 10 to 15 percent more performance on inference. Hmm. By the way, for MI300, for AMD instance, Instinct Accelerators, or NVIDIA, uh, and for some training applications, we've, we've shown 20% performance uplift. Everything else held constant. All we've done is, is move a higher performance CPU in there. Right. Now, why is that? It's because of Amdahl's law, right? By, by speeding up you know, the, that part of the algorithm that is in, you know, the CPU is executing, you're, you're just speeding up the whole process, sort of proportionally the amount of work that's being done there. And so it's, it, it can make a very big difference. And I think that as we really recognize this and as we play this forward, we'll design CPUs that are even better at right. feeding, accelerating, and orchestrating GPUs. Interesting. Not, yeah. a, lot, not a lot of people know that. Hmm. Yeah, I think uh, you sort of see it when you see these big systems that are combined with a CPU, GPU, and why the most advanced ones, and that's why I, I use the word symbiotic, is because right. I think people, yeah. and we've actually seen it in the market. There are a number of companies, and it became a little taboo to kind of talk about the CPU for AI, but we still know a lot of inferencing is done sure. on right. CPUs, including on Epic. That's so, true as well. Um, Forrest, I just want to thank you so much for joining us. I know it's been a really busy day. Um, congratulations on all the announcements, and sure. we look forward to hopefully having you back soon, whether it's next year at Advancing AI in 2025, or hopefully sometime sooner. Very good, well thanks a lot guys, appreciate, uh, appreciate the opportunity to chat. Yeah, thanks Forrest.
And thank you for tuning into this episode of The 6-5. We are on the road here at the Advancing AI event for AMD in San Francisco. Hit subscribe, join us for all of our content and coverage from the event. There was a lot of it. And be part of our community. We appreciate you, but we got to go for now. See you later. Thank <laughs> you.